So we've done interviews with the Jansa before, but they've always been sketchy, done on sketchy cameras under sketchy conditions. So we thought we'd get Fox Oza Media's professional angle on it and have a proper interview dialogue discussion. <coughs> you have to carry it as much as me. You. I'm only going to speak through the power of the chicken. We're doing it at 5.55pm on the 5th of the 5th because of the law of fives. Of course. Which is? A very interesting concept. Um, I think it's, what I've read of it, I was first introduced to it um, in the Illuminatus trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson and uh, Robert Shear, um, which references so many things that the KLF then went on to do and sort of call themselves Justified Ancients of Moo Moo. They're in the Illuminatus trilogy as well. Uh, Bob Wilson was one of the just amazing 60s counterculture heroes, good pals with Dr. Timothy Leary, um, Alan Watts, Terence McKenna, all of that gang. Um, and he, uh, he, he had a, he, he kind of like started like an anti-religion called Discordianism. Anti-theist. Uh, in a way, yeah, uh, and they they just chose Eris, the goddess of chaos, as their 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 god. Um, but he um, and and a and a move that angered the the Roman Catholic Church at one of the meetings when all these people got together. There was really just a lot of like, counterculture people who uh, didn't subscribe to the status quo and believed themselves to be non-conformists in many ways, like they would all get together at different meetings and stuff like that. Like a hellfire club. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Cause a little bit of a mischief, uh, and a little bit of chaos as well, and having fun at the same time as well. So, we at Hellfire Club, we don't go around distending uh, people's tongues or cheeks or anything like that. But I know one band that does, the Chip Marks. Chibmarks, yeah, the Chibmarks have some uh, some wild initiation ceremonies uh, just to get in the band, which I believe in, involves some cable ties and duct tape. Uh, I no took, chickens are thankfully harmed in it though. I took an unknown psychedelic drug in the Amazonian rainforest and I was poisoned by a plant at the same time and the physical manifestation of that trip was the Chibmarks. Oi, oi, oi. That's true, yes. Um, back in... December 2014 when we played the Barrowlands, the greatest cathedral for live music in the world for the first time. Um, that was Savvy Fest for a charity called Sexual Assault Victims Initiative. Yeah. So we, we co-headlined that with Esperanza, who were delighted again to be playing with at our academy live comeback gig on Saturday the 13th of May. Tickets available with uh, Dead Man Fall as well, good pals. Esperanza, one of the School best star bands in Scotland. They are indeed. Uh, I just stuck out a post today um, just to introduce them on the event page. And um, but Gary sent me over their, their bio and it's incredible to see who they play. They like Toots and mm. the Maytals, the Wailers. Well, I interviewed them at Kelburn Garden Party 2013 and we were talking all about that and they were telling me one of my questions was, what notables have you played with? Yeah. And the answer they gave uh, was like, boom, boom, boom. Like you say, Toots and the Maytals. Yep. Like anyone who's Bad anyone Manos, in Scatterlights. Scatterlights, um, yeah. The Scatterlights. Was that Northern Irish punk band again? With what, a Scar one? It was now. Uh, uh, Stiff Little Fingers? Type, no, not so much a Scar band. Uh, Verbal Sharky. Ah, the, the Undertones. The Undertones. Undertones. Yeah. Uh, I played with them as well, so... Um, so you decided... That was a great night, so at, at that gig, before I came over your head on the Gallagher, <laughs> in the famous photograph that exists, Yeah, yeah. Uh, you looking that way and me about to come over and probably give you a, a, a good knee photo. in the back of the head, as a good photo completely oblivious to what was about to happen yeah. um, but we'd spoke earlier on that night and uh, not that you'll remember it and I'm surprised I do but it's kind of came full circle as these things have to do to, to complete the circle and uh, you said to me Blair why is there no punk bands and the uh, yellow and movement, movement. Yeah. And I went, oh, a DIY well, scene without a punk band yeah. is like yeah. sex without foreplay 
Good, good uh, metaphor, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we time elapsed as it does or it doesn't. Is it just an eternal now? <laughs> Is it constantly 5.55? Let's not get into time. Right. M- moving on. <laughs> Through time and Through space. Time. Which so is just the sensation of travelling at many millions of times the speed of light through course, the universe. Of course. So uh, fast forward to doing the rabbit hole last year and we were sitting in uh, Tony and Mary Grant's caravan. Yeah, now it's all hour, fallen together. Early hours of the morning. I was there too. I'm not, I can't remember everybody that was there. I've was got there. some really bad memory problems but um, that, that's part I do remember. Uh, and Kev was sitting across from me and we we were booked to play in the Vortex Lounge in the Weavers in Condor Cumberland ran by Rab McDonald um, and Rab, an old school punk, named that the Vortex Lounge after the old Vortex Club from, from London. So that, that was also quite synchronistic yeah. that when I said to them, right, I think at the time it was about 45 days. Like I said, do you think you can learn a set in 45 days? If and you three can, cards. I'll give you 15 minutes at the beginning of that gig. Because uh, it was just going to be us and our good pals, the Bark- Barking Spiders, who are mostly from Moody'sburn, who are all, all old school pals of ours and folk that we grew up with around what we were head in, in Moody'sburn. And that, that, was, that was our gig that we were really looking forward to doing, to play with them, which had been the first time in a wee while. Uh, and I uh, so we put Kev and Tony on the spot and they committed to it and I doffed my disco c- cap to them they, they did, they got in the rehearsal studio started uh, writing their oi 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 punk lyrics and getting the three chords down my dog's gay get fucking over it uh, and there's such dunk. notable hits buff the dog uh, the instrumental cable, <laughs> ca- cable ties and duct tape what else have they got? Uh, Hammer Rackers. Hammer Rackers, that's it. Right. Um, um, knuckle. The Zeller one, which is... Um, knuck something. What's the one about Pokemon? What's a Pokemon? Exactly. What is a Pokemon? Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the line goes... Anyway, at the, at the end of the chorus, I think it goes, you should be on the register, you pedo-looking cunt. <laughs> Uh, and aye, so uh, not one for the kids. I don't imagine they'll be be uh, playing many kids parties. The Sex Pistols Anything played so. a kids party. Is that right? You ever see that? They got up on the stage at a children's party right. for some charity event for children, cake, birthdays, and they got up. She was a girl from Birmingham. She just had an abortion. <laughs> I don't want a baby that looks like that. She don't want a baby that looks like that. And then this line of about several fucks, and then Sid Vicious with a donkey dart in the neck, toppling sideways through the cake. Oh. That really happened. That actually happened. Well, I went to see John Lydon do a talk. Uh, it was a BBC Six Music Festival. Came to town, took over Glasgow for a week. Um, we played a wee in-store set and love music for it. Record shop at uh, Queen Street Station. Check it out, along with all the other... Great record shops throughout Scotland. Shout outs for New me. Hellfire Club. Rare Trade in Cowinan, New Hellfire Club, down the Hidden Lane off Argyll Street, Big Spar of Vinyl, many more. Um, and um, Mark Radcliffe was interviewing them um, in the tramway. So I went to that last Saturday. The, the, I was, the main thing I was hoping to see was um, Sean Keevan interviewing Limmy, but because my pal was working, uh, by the time we arrived there, we walked in as Lemmy walked right past me. Lemmy, not Lemmy. Lemmy, not Lemmy. <laughs> Lemmy, Killmeister. Uh, oh, he's Brian Lemon, didn't he? Yes. Brian Lemons. Aye. So, um, that was, he was a pretty interesting chap, Mr. Mr. Lydon, Mr. Rotten. Talking. Did he not lose a lot of punk respect recently by uh, backing Trump and Farage? I'm not sure how much of that's been taken. Did that really happen or was that just the media cut and pasting again? Yeah, the, the usual media bullshit, innit? Probably. That's why 
You don't buy the scum. Don't buy the scum. Boycott the scum, please. Thank you. So I suppose we should mention uh, music. Colonel Mustard. Why not? Due to play the O2. Uh, yep. Yeah, we're playing again. The, the Academy. No, we've never played. I mean, we're, we're kind of like trying to work our way around You've all the venues in Glasgow that we've never played. So, we our last gig there was the, the O2 ABC on Sucky Hall Street with um, another amazing ska band, Bomb Scare and Nipples of Venus. Yeah. We, we first discovered, discovered Nipples of Venus, first came across our Dijon radar. Uh, when they played before us at Kelburn Garden Party last year uh, on the Friday night in the square stage and John and I were standing next to one another watching them and but John and I have known each other since we were five we started primary one together that's the colonel for anyone that's, that's not in the know colonel world. John Thomas McMustard to give him his full band title pseudonym and then um, there's almost like a level of telepathic understanding between the Colonel and I now because we've known each other for that long and um, I think we were both kind of feeling I we had already booked the ABC for the Yellow Christmas Party they are a definite contender um, to, to play as one of our special guests so everything worked out uh, in that respect and we were delighted as well we absolutely love Bomb Scare Love Esperanza, both bands are just amazing for the for being the flag bearers for the ska scene in uh, Scotland Strange and uh, deserved deserve so. So um, we decided to take a break. Um, well, last year we finished in 38 gigs, which included 18 festivals across Scotland, England, Ireland and South Korea. Not Tokyo. The, not Tokyo, <laughs> South Korea, uh, Seoul. Soul got soul and, and not the moon yet, but uh, we've got a pencil on the moon yeah, uh, later on this year. A race between the gyro babies and Colonel Mustard to play the moon, not to mention get Chris Heron on the moon to beat up Justin Bieber. Right, okay, arrives. the space race. Well, big, big Moog's our drummer, Hamoglophonic. He works in Cumbernauld and the, the big, whoever owns it, Sony or whoever, the big set for Outlander. A show I've never seen, but apparently it's like it's. I don't know, 200 million budget or something Highlander. crazy like that. No, not Highlander, Outlander I think it's called. Right. We played a rap party last year, in the SWG3. Anyway, it's pretty big budget. The Avengers are in there just now, they've been using the same studio to film some stuff. Uh, big big Moogs, he was also, do, they were doing some stuff for the, the new The Last Train Spotting sequel, the T2, yeah. um, which completes the circle because his dad is one of the Russian sailors in the original Trainspotting film. Yeah. Uh, so they've got a massive green screen up there, or a portable green screen. I'm not sure how these things work. So we've been offered the opportunity to use it for some video shooting, which at some point I imagine we're going to take them up on that very kind offer. So maybe we could... Uh, maybe we could resurrect the spirit of Stanley Kubrick, who many people believe shot or directed the, the moon landings and using the, <laughs> using the green screen we could recreate a space race between Jack of Trades, Gyro Babies, Mark and Colonel Mustard and the Dijon 5 to see who plants and the Gonzo Division and the Gonzo Division the Gonzo Division have been saying this for years as soon as they announced the first commercial flights to the moon Justin Bieber booked first passage and everybody said that I should be sent to the moon in order to greet Justin Bieber right. and boot his balls in orbit. Well, maybe, maybe we should green screen that first then, just to make sure that you're there as, as the welcoming Justin party. Justin Bieber's agent contacted Hellfire and said, do you mean Justin Bieber, actual harm? This was years ago as well. Aye? Yeah, it's got like thousands of members now with this page. Aye. It's a bit dusty now, it doesn't really get used, but Justin Bieber's agent contacted us and said, do you mean Justin Bieber, actually harm? We said something to the effect of, get up, you, your ball bag. They asked us to take the page down <laughs> and he said no. It's a hang, as Mark would say. It's a hang. It is, it is. So we're going to be first on the moon. To infinity and beyond. Yeah. But does the moon exist though, or, or is there a flat? Uh, we're not going to get into this. We're not, we're not. So that's enough for part one. We're going to refresh our snake bite and green tea. Slangeva. And we'll see you for part two in a minute.